2, 6 through 16. Can you turn it down a little? Oh, oh. Uh. There. However, when we are among mature people, we do speak a message of wisdom, but not the wisdom of the world or of the rulers of this world who are passing off the scene. Instead, we speak about God's wisdom in a hidden secret, which God destined before the world began for our glory. None of the rulers of this world understood it, because if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. <laughs> Amen. Lord, you're so good. Saying that. <laughs> but as it is written, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined the things that God has prepared for those Thank who love him. Lord. Thank you, Lord. But God has revealed those things to us by his spirit. For his spirit searches everything, even the deep things of God. Is there anyone who can understand his own thoughts except by his own inner spirit? In the same way, no one can know the thoughts of God except God's spirit. Yes. Now we have not received the spirit of the world, but yeah. the spirit who comes from God, so that we can understand the things that were freely given to us by God. We don't speak about these things with words taught us by human wisdom, but with words taught by the spirit. As we explain spiritual things to spiritual people, yes. a person, uh, I lost my place, just a sec. A person who isn't spiritual doesn't accept the things of God's right. spirit, yes. for they are nonsense to him. Yes, sir. Uh, Lord, help us to know the difference between nonsense yes. and the craziness. Yes, now yes, more than ever. Yes. yes. They don't understand them because they are spiritually evaluated. Right. The spirit, spiritual person evaluates everything but is subject to no one else's evaluation Amen. for who has known the mind of the lord so that he can advise him yes however and this is a great one we have the mind of yeshua hamashiach the yes. lord the mind of christ the anointed one which means that that anointing can come on us and live Whoa. it does live in us but yes, there is also an anointing that can come yes. on us Yes. And yes. we can share that with people yes, that want to know him. Glory Amen. God. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Bill, what was that scripture passage again? First Corinthians 2. Thank you. Something through 16. Six. Six through 16. Thank you. And then I read um, Ephesians 3, 16 and 17. Ephesians 3. Why don't we just read <coughs> Ephesians 3. Okay. That's good. Visions three. Three. Is that good, Nikki? Okay. Yeah. For this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for you Gentiles, if indeed you have heard of the dispensation of grace of God, which was given to me for you, how that by revelation he made known to me the mystery, as I briefly written already by which when you read you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of christ which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men as it is now been revealed by the spirit to his holy apostles and prophets that the gentiles should follow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in christ through the gospel of which I became a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effective working of his power. Amen. Purpose of the mystery. To me, who am less than the least of all the saints, this grace was given, that I should preach among the Gentiles Thank the you. unsearchable riches of Christ. Glory God. Amen. And to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God, who created all things through Christ, Jesus Christ, to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principles and powers in the heavenly places, according to the eternal purpose, which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord, 
in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. Yes, thank you. yes. Therefore, I ask that you do not lose heart at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. Amen. Appreciation of the mystery. For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the width, the length, and depth and height, to know the love of Christ, which yes. passes yes. on. Praise God. That Amen. you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him yeah. who is able yes. to do exceedingly Seemly abundantly above, above all oh. that we ask Glory. or yes. be according to the power that works in us. To him, him be the glory the church by Christ, Christ Jesus, Jesus to all generations, generations forever and ever. Amen. 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 That is good. You know, Pastor, in, in number 18, in verse 18, uh, it it talks about the height, the width, yes. the yes. depth, yes. and the, the the width, the length, the depth, and the height. Yeah. Well, we live in a three dimensional world. That's good. You yes. know, yeah. there's three dimensions. What? Why is he talking about a fourth dimension? And I believe this is just my belief that that fourth dimension is the supernatural dimension. Yes, that is. we also are in this supernatural place where the heavens can be right here with us, That's but good. he's talking about that the, the, this is stuff that goes beyond all Amen. human knowledge. We Amen. have to trust Amen. it in the spirit. Amen. That's so powerful. That's really good. Amen. We agree. We agree. Glory to God. Okay, let's read. Let's read uh, just because this is one of my favorite. Uh, First Samuel 5. And this is uh, where Eli had just died and uh, the Philistines had the ark. <laughs> they took it. So, you know, we just want to remember that, you know, we have, we deal with very, in our world, very wicked people oh. think they have the ark. <laughs> they think they have the right God and they think they have... Uh, the uh, ability to control things and to take control of this earth even they believe that they believe they're going to take control of this earth yep but let's just read this but then the philistines took the ark of god and brought it from ebenezer to ashdod when the philistines took the ark of god they brought it to the house of dagon and set it by dagon because <laughs> Who was Dagon? But you know? <laughs> Let's see. Here's my note. Now on his face. Yeah. The chief god of the Philistines. He was thought to control the weather and the fertility of the land. This god appears to be a Philistine adaptation of the Canaanite god Baal. Of course. Right. It's all, all, all. all Baal. <laughs> who is sometimes referred to the ancient literature as the son of Dagon. Uh, Philistia was an important grain producing region. The worship of Dagon was thought to ensure a good crop. Well, no. Amen. <laughs> Amen. The truth. Okay. Right. Amen. All right. So they set the Ark of God by Dagon. Uh, and when the people of Ashdod arose early in the morning, there was Dagon fallen on his face to the earth before the ark of the Lord. Even Dagon will bow his knee uh, right to the one true God because um, you know what? The very wicked people, the, the, the Luciferians, whatever, whoever they are, they know the truth. They've read this Bible, and they actually believe this Bible is true. More than we do, probably. <laughs> and for some reason, they're deluded into believing that they will win. That they, they're lying. They are lying. And they're lying to us. They've believed a lie. They've been deluded. And the Bible says they'll turn. he'll turn you over 
if you're going to believe those lies, he said, well, God said, well, I'll just turn you over to a demented mind. I'll, mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to. That's where they're at. That's, that's where, where they're at. And then they're turned. And then we, we question why on earth are they doing the things they're doing? Well, it's because they've been turned over to a demented mind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bill said this morning that California now has classified the bee, right? Mm -hmm. as, as a, a fish. fish. <laughs> because uh, the fish has so much protection. Right. They want they, the bee to have the same they want protection. The bee to have the same protection as the fish. So, so it's a trans species so, bee. <laughs> so whatever. <laughs> That's you're crazy. Like, you know, but your brain listen, your brain doesn't work right That's when right. you believe um, the enemy. The lies. No, if you start believing one lie, you'll uh, pretty soon you'll start to believe more lies and then it'll just get out of hand. And you are believing more lies than you can imagine. It doesn't get any easier. So they took Dagon and set it in its place again. Can you imagine? They came in and they're like, oh, we must have had a little bit of a wiggle in the night. <laughs> so they sat him in his place again. And in the next morning, they er, uh, early in the next morning, there was Dagon fallen on its face to the ground before the ark of the Lord. The head of Dagon and both the palms of its hands were broken off on the threshold. It's like he was trying to get out. Mm. I get out of this place. <laughs> yeah, let me out of here. <laughs> Only Dagon's torso was left of it. Therefore neither the priests of Dagon nor any who came who come into Dagon's house tread on the threshold of Dagon in Ashdod to this day. <laughs> but the hand of the Lord was heavy on the people of Ashdod and he ravished them and struck them with tumors. Both Ashdod, uh, yeah, right, yeah, Amorite. Amorite, yeah, Amorite, yeah yes. at its territory. I was thinking about this this morning, and I was thinking, isn't it interesting when God touches you, everything that is uh, wicked wants to come out. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, these two more tumors or hemorrhoids are trying to get out of the body because God's presence is around. It's, and Amen. that's that's why we can say to our bodies. No sickness is allowed to be here because Amen. I am a hosting host of the Most High God, and the sickness has to get out in right. Jesus' name, and he has to run out the door. We Amen. Just thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. So, ravished them, struck them with tumors, both Ashton and its territory. And when the men of Ashton saw how it was, um, they said, the ark of God of Israel must not remain with us for his hand is harsh toward us and Dagon what? our God <laughs> no duh <laughs> I does not like the devil <laughs> nope, nope, right. and guess what that devil doesn't like you either That's it doesn't matter how nice your Dagon your, you are no. to Dagon how many no. offerings you give to any God um, you look right now they're worshiping Shiva and all these other gods and it's like do you think that guy is ever going to like you because you're sadly mistaken you might be the best handpiece for God you might be the best witch you might be the best sorcerer that he has at work but do you think one second he actually likes you nope, nope he's nope, going to nope. use you and yes. destroy you and guy. spit you out and spit you out exactly and those demons that are also in cahoots they don't like you any better and mm. they hate each other yeah so that's why they can't get too far because they 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 and this is true of people who are doing these things that are in agreement with the enemy they just can't seem to get things done because they end up um fighting over who gets credit they fight over who gets uh the power the money the whatever so they agree they're gonna agree for a time we know that you know we're running into the time where they're gonna agree for a time but then then when god shows his power i'll tell you what they'll run to destroy each other yeah it's been like that at every battle Amen. and look at look at jehoshaphat and all these yes guys, you know the, the all the enemy is coming and they're all together united and god just sort of says yeah. And, and away they sudden, go killing each, boom, other. killing each other. Everybody's dead. Yeah. The Israelites come over the hill and they're like, what? 
<laughs> what happened? Thank you, God. You know what in our lives right now? We give you glory and praise, Lord, because yes, we Lord. know that you can have the enemy turn on itself. Yeah. Anything. Yeah. You know, I used to say, um, if there was somebody I thought they were throwing a curse at me or something like that, I'd say, no, it has to boomerang. Amen. And we just thank you, Lord, that that curse goes back to cinder, return yes, to yes. cinder. And I'm not saying the person necessarily. I'm saying the, the spirit, the, the devil, one that that curse, it has to go back to the cinder, return to cinder. You may Amen. not come upon me Amen. in Jesus' Amen. name because I'm a child Jesus. of the most high God. None of that wickedness can land on my Amen. property, That's my right. animals, That's my right. vehicle, my house. My body, my physical body, or anybody that I'm concerned yes. with, my friends and my family, all of that, even oh, the extended yeah. ones, that we're protected. We are under the blood covering of Jesus Christ. We give you glory and praise and honor. So we don't have to bow down to that wicked thing Amen. or be afraid that's right. because that's how the enemy works is with terror. He is a terrorist. And if he can get you to operate in fear and shut you down with fear, then you are trapped in a place of uh, misery and it might it might feel okay to be in fear but i tell you no. what it will eventually eat you up on the inside sure. therefore verse 8 therefore they sent and gathered themselves all the lords of the philistines and said what shall we do with the ark of god of israel i want to get rid of this thing and they answered let the ark of god of israel be carried away to gath which is where who lived does anybody remember? Goliath. Goliath, right? <laughs> yeah. The giant. So they carried the Ark of God of Israel away. So it was after they carried it away, and the hand of the Lord was against the city with a very great destruction. And he struck the men of the city, both small and great. Then they're like, oh, oh, no, not here. And the tumors broke out on them personally. Their secret parts. Their secret parts. Therefore, they sent the Ark of God to Ekron. They're like, <laughs> what town are we going to do? So here's God destroying every little town, every little Philistine town <laughs> that, came, that accepts the Ark of God in. Okay. So sent the Ark of God to Ekron. So it was that the Ark of God came to Ekron. And the Ekronites cried out saying, they have the Ark. <laughs> of the God of Israel to us to kill us and our people. So they sent and gathered all the lords of the Philistines and said, send away the ark of God of Israel and let it go back. Boy, I pray that we can be that kind of people. Yes. Yes. That they say, hold on, don't come in here. <laughs> we know you have God. <laughs> yes. And we know we're, you know, we're worshiping the wrong, wrong thing. Don't come around us, we'll die. Okay, that's the fear of the Lord. Yeah. Yes. yes. All right. They have the ark of God to kill us and our people. So they sent and gathered all the lords of the Philistines and said, send away the ark of God to Israel. Let it go back to its own place. So it does not kill us and our people. For there was deadly destruction throughout all the city. The hand of God was very heavy there. And the men who did not die were stricken with tumors. And the cry of the city went up to heaven. <laughs> now the Lord... Or now the ark of the Lord was in the country of the Philistines for seven months. And the Philistines called for the priests and the diviners saying, What shall we do with this ark of the Lord? Tell us how we should send it to its place. So they said, If you send away the ark of God to Israel, do not send it empty. But by all means, returning it to him with a trespass offering. In other words, you stole it. Mm -hmm. And you trespassed on God. Right. I mean, think about it. You took, you took stuff that was God's. Then you will be healed, and it will be known to you why his hand is not removed is not removed from you. Then they said, "What is the trespass offering which we shall return to him?" And so they answered, five golden tumors, five golden rats, according to the number of the lords of the Philistines. For the same plague was on all of you <laughs> and on your lords. Therefore, you shall make images of your tumors, images of your rats. That ravaged the land. See, we didn't even hear that earlier. Right. The rats. Can you imagine a plague of rats? Uh -huh. ah, that's so disgusting. And you shall give glory to the God of Israel. Perhaps he will lighten his hand from you and your gods from your land. Why then do you harden your hearts as the Egyptians and Pharaoh hardened their hearts when he did mighty things among them? Did they not let the people go that they might depart? Now take make a, a new cart. 
take two milk cows, and then they sit this out. Let me just say, um, if you still twenty dollars, this is just a rep, a representative. When you have when you've stolen something, yeah. if you steal twenty dollars, you would return twenty dollars plus twenty percent. So right. that's what they were doing here. They had stolen it, so they are giving gold back uh, plus twenty percent. Okay, to the the, ex the exact amount plus twenty percent. Okay. Um, Hitch the cows in, send it away. And verse nine, and watch if it goes up the road uh, to its own territory to Beth Shemesh, then he has done, God has done this, uh, great evil. done us great evil. But if not, then we shall know that it is not his hand that has struck us, it has happened by chance. Then the, then the men did so, they took two milk cows, hitched them to the cart, they set the ark of the Lord on the cart and the chest with gold rats images of their tumors the cows headed straight for the road to oh. beth shemesh <laughs> which means house of the sun just so you know and went along the highway lowing as they went they did not turn aside to the right or the left and the lords of the philistines went after them to the border of beth shemesh and the people of beth shemesh were reaping their wheat harvest in the valley and they lifted their eyes and they saw the ark and they rejoiced to see it Amen. glory to god then the cart came to the field of joshua and stood there, and the large stone was there. Glory to God. Glory to God. <laughs> okay, I won't take time to read all of that. Um, but that's such a good story. I, yes. love, I love what the Lord does when Amen. he gets to prove himself as God. Praise the Lord. Obedid Edom. Obed Edom. Mm -hmm. Woo Obed Edom. Which is next. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. You read that next is so good. Yeah, we'll let you read that one next week. How does that sound, Pony? <laughs> that cool. would be good. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> read the story and you can tell us. Oh, they need them. Glory to God. You know, this morning I was studying and I was looking at the story of, of Abraham and Lot. Yeah. And the angels went down to try and convince Lot, but 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 before they went, you know, Abraham's interceding. For the city and for his nephew and for all his stuff and they went through all this all these things and then the two angels they go down to sodom and the lord says well okay we've communed and he leaves and what did abraham do he went in and went to sleep because he trusted that the lord would do what was right that he would protect lot and yes. that that it was taken care of and that's something we have to do Amen. we have to say we've prayed we've interceded we've asked you lord for your blessing to come to us and to those that we're praying for Amen. and let's rest yes. that yes. will rest I in trust. the truth yeah. that you every promise you give Praise. you fulfill right. Amen. bill we trust in we uh trust in the lord Amen. We rest in the Lord. We yes. rest in the Lord. Amen. I will trust in chariots. I will trust Amen. in horses. But I will trust in the name of the Lord, my God. Yes. Amen. Yes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let's just thank the Lord for his presence. Uh, put, put, thank put, you, Holy Spirit. Yeah. Lord, we just thank you for your word. Thank you, Father, for your presence here this morning. We give you all glory, all praise, all honor. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, that you took us from Passover to, to Pentecost. Yes. And here yes. we are. Thank you. We're expected, Lord, Thank for you, what Lord. you're going to do. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you glory and praise. We say there is no other God that can stand before you. We thank you, Father, that as you take us through the rest of this year, you, Lord, have our backs. You have us in your hands. We just give you all glory. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Pour out your spirit upon us this morning. Rest upon us here, Lord. We thank you, Father, for the anointing that is in each one of us. We thank you and we give you glory that is upon us so we can hear the good news and so that we can believe you more and trust you more and we can take it out. Lord, 
We are your church. We are the sheep of your pasture. Lord, teach us today, Father. Holy Spirit, teach us today. As we as we look at your word, may we remember these things. When they're operating in that other God's name, they don't have power. No. You know, okay, somebody just somebody said to me not long ago, um, you know, people have figured out because you know, Harry Potty. Potter was a big deal. <laughs> Harry right. Potter was a big deal because all of a sudden kids started to realize that that had some sort of power, right? Big power. But the one true God has way more power yeah. than that. And that power, that sorcery, and that witchcraft is all about manipulation. Mm -hmm. And can I say that when you're operating in manipulation, it's not love. No. If I come at something and I want something and I cast a spell or whatever that thing is, that is full on manipulation, witchcraft. I mean, I can even be a believer and I can say, well, I want this my way. That's full on manipulation and that sorcery of power. But that has no power compared to the one true God. If you put, you cannot stack them next to each other and one, like we just saw, Dagon falls flat on his face in the in the presence of the one true God. And we know that ark didn't have any power of itself. That ark of the covenant didn't have That's power. Right. God, his power was in it. And so Dagon fell flat on his face. First time, and then the second time, it was everything fell off of him. Right. He couldn't get out the door fast right. enough. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> you have God. Well, I have a scripture, and I wasn't sure if I was going to yes. read it, but uh, this is um, David talking to Solomon, and it's in First Chronicles twenty-eight uh, nine. But he says, First Chronicles twenty-eight nine. I, We're having some problems with yeah. the. Okay, okay, no problem. It says, uh, know the God of your father and serve Him with a loyal heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searches all hearts and understands all the intent of the thoughts. Excellent. Excellent. So when you are manipulating or you are, God knows all this. Amen. Yes, you're, right. not, you're not tricking him. That's yes, right. You're not, uh, I keep saying he's not a microwave God. You yeah. don't get to push the button and get your answer in 30 seconds. Uh -huh. I, I mean, but he sees your intentions and he yes. understands. Yes. The intent of your thoughts. That's right. So that's right. Be careful. Yeah, be careful. <laughs> exactly. I have a note yeah. on, the, yes. on the witchcraft. <coughs> yes. I've noticed that people that I've known that have dabbled in that. Yes. The only thing that I that they that they kind of go aha aha and think about is when I say how limiting what they've done is because they're relying only on what they know. Yes. Right. To get what they think they want. Oh, that's and it's, it's like it hits right here. Right. Whatever they think. And I'm like, no, it's real. You can do it. Yeah. You can yeah. do it. It's, you know, it's not fate. You can, there, are, there are things that happen. Exactly. Dem the demons make things happen all the time that look that's like right. the personal power. Yeah. I don't mention that to them. Yeah. I just, right. say, I just say, you know, gosh, that's just so limiting. Very good. You know, and, good they, and they go, huh. <laughs> I guess it is. And then, yeah, so that's when I see it if you run across and even just, you know, encourage them and, and but let yeah. them know, like, gosh, that's really limiting. But hey, you go, girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty you soon go. you'll yeah. get tired of that lack Pretty of power. Pretty soon you're going to go, wait a minute. This is only hitting the ceiling. That's, that's really happening. good. Yeah. That's, it's because it's true. Yeah. And when you, that's why when we pray in agreement with the one true God, mm -hmm. we are, we are setting Yes. We are setting the power of heaven yes. Yes. Amen. to move on our behalf. Amen. Yes. One of the things I just was learning about in the past couple of weeks is that at the Tower of Babel, God took the language of unity away from the people. Oh, that's at right. the Pentecost this past right. week. That's good. That he restored the unified language. All the people were in unity praying, and when they were given that language, that's the power now that we as a group can pray to our Lord in a way he understands and, and the devil doesn't. That's so good. And that, that it's it's a language of unity, restored, restored. How that's powerful why, is that? That's why the enemy has fought so hard. That's why he hates to it. To divide the church against 
you know, all those gifts of the spirit. Those things are gone. Those are things yeah, that aren't wrong, available anymore. Wrong. No, I'm telling you, not not only are they still here to see you, but they are powerful. Yeah. And that's why they wanted us not to sing, not together. They said the church is irrelevant yeah. during the pandemic. I'm like, are you kidding me? We're starting a church. <laughs> Just to say how relevant it is yeah. because you, it is essential. It is essential Absolutely. that we, the Bible says, even much more so as we see these things come upon us, it's more important that we gather than never before, ever before. Amen. So That's we right. just continue. We do more than we thought we would. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Right? Yes. I love that. Yes, tongues is the, the, the um, language of unity. And where at the Tower of Babel, it was spread across the nation. All of the nations separated at that point in time. And um, that's such a powerful, powerful study. But when Pentecost happened, God's like, hey, I got something to bring us all back together. Yeah. <laughs> and I love it because it's not, it's not some heavenly language that is not a real language. You sure. know, um, we can't just, we can't just make it up. We're actually speaking that language yes, yes. and we don't know that language. I don't know that language, but let's turn to the Acts and Two. let's just read that scripture. Acts chapter two and it might be Acts chapter three because, oh yeah. Two, four. Two, four is when they began to speak in tongues. With, and the, as the Spirit gave them utterance, Amen. and there were dwelling in Jerusalem devout men from every nation under heaven. Isn't that interesting? Mm. Yeah, and that's, of course, every known nation. I, who knows? And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and they were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. Then they were amazed and marveled, saying to one another, look. Are these not all who speak Galileans? Aren't they? Wait, aren't these all the Israelites? In other words, these are these people that are all gathered here are Israelites. How do they know all of these language that are from languages that are from all parts of the known world? Um, in our own language, which we're born, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, uh, Egypt, and parts of uh, Libya. Adjoining Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews, proselytes, Cretans, Cretans, and Arabs. We hear them speaking in our own tongues. The wonderful words yeah. of God. They were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, whatever could this mean? And others are going to mock. You know what? They're going to mock. Doesn't matter. That's right. That's <laughs> we right. just have, have to get our big britches on and say, glory, I will not mock. I will be one that participates yes. in heaven. Yes. And, uh, and you know what? I'll take another drink of the Spirit of God yes. because Jesus said, those who drink of, of what he offers will never thirst again. Uh, I just ran across my note in my Bible that says, we don't just drink. We don't just thirst. And we don't just drink water to quench our thirst. Amen. There's a purpose, a lot of purpose behind drinking water. Yes. I, the Lord just said it to me one day. But then this last week, he said, you don't just hunger just to fill your belly. There's purpose in it. Mm -hmm. Because we have to have food that not only feed, feeds our hunger, yes. but it actually satisfies the needs of our body, right? Yes. So yes. we hunger after the things of the Lord because it, it fulfills the needs of our spirit and our physical body. Yes. Same thing with water. We thirst for the things of heaven the quenching of the thirst of our of our but it doesn't just quench our thirst it fulfills the needs for our body so those that don't have that don't walk in that are at a deficit yes. and we are the ones who bring the water we bring the wine we bring the joy of the spirit we bring the food so um that's why we hunger that's why we thirst it's not just for physical it's for spiritual is so important. Glory. Amen. Glory. Amen. Glory. 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 Thank you, Glory. Lord. He's so good, isn't he? Amen. Yes. Amen. Praise. I hope you guys I hope you guys can participate in fire camp. If you can, we'd love to have you. Tomorrow night we start at 5 30. And then uh it'll be again Saturday morning from about night. We start at 9 30 
to about 3.30. I don't know if it'll go that long. We'll have a break in there for lunch. Bring your sack lunch. And uh, it's going to be fun. If, if this last week was any indication, yikes. <laughs> it's going to be good. <laughs> we have not done two adult fire camps in a row ever. So this is, this is new. And um, we're, I'm excited. We had a blast. And we had several big miracles happen. It was a lot of fun. And we're still hearing, you know, you hear the testimonies afterwards. Wait, I went home and I slept all night. Not only did I not have trouble, breathe, you know, sleeping, I didn't have trouble breathing. I didn't have, I didn't have a heart thing. I mean, we're hearing all kinds of miracles. So praise the Lord. That's, that's so much fun. And it's a work. I tell you, I came home and I was completely you exhausted. Are. <laughs> but it is so much fun. You are just full of the spirit, and it's like a blast. And what? And if you come, what we what we sell or what we settle on? What are the five things that we we really work on? Is hearing the voice of God. Friday night will start out right off, and it this will move so fast. This 24 hours that we are doing fire camp will move so fast. You you know, you'll get done and you'll go, what, what just happened? <laughs> <laughs> and so um, how do you hear the voice of God? We give excellent protocol. You know, there's a river of the Holy Spirit running. We want to stay in the banks of the river. Because if you go outside the banks of the river, outside the protocol, you can do a lot of damage, right? Yeah. You flood things, you know, you didn't mean to flood. So we want to stay in the river. So that's what we'll do Friday night, 5.30 to about 7.30, plus a little minus. And then um, that Friday night and then Saturday morning, we'll start at 9.30. And we are immediately, well, we'll do, we'll do just a little bit of teaching, but then we will immediately go and break up into groups. I'm thinking three or four groups. And we will do, um, um, we'll practice the prophetic. We will do... Um, <laughs> I know what we do. I just cannot uh, <laughs> list it off. <laughs> uh, prophetic healing, which is fabulous. <laughs> because when you're asking from heaven, this these are tools that you can use when you're at the grocery store. These yeah. are tools that you yes. go out and you can use them anywhere. So it's that it's so simple. You're gonna go, oh, this is so simple. I can't believe I didn't know about this before. Okay, so prophetic. Uh, prophetic healing, dreams and dream interpretation, yes. another fantastic uh, evangelism tool, prophetic art, and angels. Angels, yes. And because we want to know when the angels are around. What, oh. Actually, they're here today. Glory yes. to God. Yes. <laughs> I just realized. Oh, man, yeah. since that. Yeah. Woo, thank you, Jesus. So um, all those five things. And then those are where, that's where we land the holy spirit does other things sometimes but we just say glory to god it's going to be fun it'll it's so much fun and it sets you free from whatever uh, thing wants to stop you from sharing the gospel outside the church it's for us now we teach the same thing to the little children that we teach to the big adults <laughs> Amen. i'm Amen. telling you it's so simple yet profound, and you get done, and you are not going to sit and listen to, to lecture. We're not going to lecture you. We're going to just get you started, and it's so easy so and fun because things happen. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, yes. Do, do we need to sign up? No, yeah, just come. Sign up? Just come. Just okay. come. Bring a sack lunch on, on Saturday. Okay. Yeah. I am, I might have to be late both days. Okay. A little bit late the first day because I'm so my granddaughter she's coming with. Okay. So how old wow. is she? She's 11, 12. Oh, she'll be perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 might come too, teenagers, you know, that will be able to yeah. do this fine. Now we do have a kids' fire yeah. camp that's coming at the end of June, but she'll be good at this one. We'll be, we'll be It'll it's be not, fun. It's not Saturday night too, is it? Saturday night we're going to um, break up right. in teams. Right. And everybody who has been here at Fire Camp can sit on a team if they would like to. And you can either do prophetic art, prophetic um, words, you know. And, and so okay. we'll pray, and then we will break out into okay. groups. And so the whole prophetic night will be practiced. Okay, so, but but I, but it could be just till dinner time, and then that's okay to leave there. We'll stop at three or three thirty. Okay, because my husband's going out of town, and right. I, I don't think I want to be. 
Saturday night. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So we'll start at five thirty on Saturday night. Then we'll be home. Maybe it'll be somebody that lives up near you that you could ride with if you wanted to. Oh, but you oh, don't I have didn't. to. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to be there Saturday night. But um, the Saturday night is practice. You practice. doing this? You doing yes. the work of the church? Yes. <laughs> It's so much fun. Cool. Yay! Yeah. Oh, I bet you're exhausted. I bet you get tired. Oh, yeah. We're fully exhausted. But. And it's not a physical exhaust. It's not so much a physical. I mean, it's, it's amazing what happens. But we had, the. let me just tell you, the best prophetic word given all weekend was a lemon. <laughs> it was so good. It was like a lemon. It was all it was. We were we were facing the wall, and I'll tell the story. It was so powerful. I, how can God do that? I'm always like, yes. oh, Jesus, yes. you're so good. <laughs> oh, because you can never guess what He's going to do, and then when you see what He does, you just <laughs> fall over. You fall, fall over. over. Praise that God. was so simple, God. Praise God. That was so good. That was so powerful. So praise the Lord. All right. So that's what's going to be happening. So I just invite you all. Just come. You, you won't be embarrassed. It'll be fun. <laughs> and we have a lot of, I, I have a team of people that teach. So it's my team. You'll get to hear somebody besides me, which is even more fun. <laughs> but you've probably met most of my team. Jim and Janet. Yep. Um, Carol, I don't know if you remember Carol. Yes. Um, Kristen White, she worked with us, um, and she's worked with us before in fire camp. Bill, I might rope you in. I know you've been in fire camp. Yep. I love that. So rope you, man. We'll see what It's fun. <laughs> it is so much fun. <laughs> yeah, we rope you, man. <laughs> okay, glory to God. We have others. We have, thankfully, we're getting a lot of people trained, and then yes. that way we can have help when we need to train the kids. So we also have... Um, a camp in Grand, Grand Junction coming up, and maybe maybe more. Who knows? But anyway, it'll be good. I always, you know, I used to argue with the Lord a bit about fire camp. And I was like, <laughs> I was complaining because it's always work. It's always a, it's always a lot of work. And it doesn't matter whether you have five people or 500, you've got a lot of work. And I traveled the world with this. When we were in Africa, there were 300. But I, let me just say, the fire camps in Africa were completely over the top. The fire camps in India, over the top. You can't even, you can't even imagine what happens. And um, the, just the Spirit of God is moving. And... Um, and that's all we're doing is giving God permission. Yes. And and giving him, we're just saying, Holy Spirit, come. And um, anyway, oh my goodness, where was I going? I used to argue. Okay. I was arguing with the Lord. And this has been, now I, I figured out that it's been, we're going on 18 years of fire camp. Oh. 18 plus years. Oh. And um, it just happened because I was like, Nobody's training the kids in the prophetic, and I had I still had little kids, and so I was like, I'm 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 going to do it, and I didn't know what I was doing. I just jumped in, and um, I had people say, Well, we need a curriculum. We need a curriculum, and I'm like, Well, if you make a curriculum, then nobody will ask Holy Spirit what to do. Right. <laughs> that was my that was my complaint. You know, I'm like, No, you have to ask Holy Spirit because. I learn every year. I learn something new yep. because I'm at, I'm yep. like desperate. I'm like, yes. you know, you, if you, if you're standing in front of a room full yes. of women yes. and you're doing fire camp and your healing teacher didn't show up and it's time to do healing, you're standing there going, okay, God, what are you going to do? Yes. <laughs> and he gives you the answer. Yes. And you do it. So, and it works. And you're like, because right. <laughs> it's not you, no. it's what yeah. Holy Spirit wants yeah. to do. And if I ever lose that, I want Holy Spirit. And we actually, it happened down at Frank Down, because um, we got up on Sunday morning to preach. And I was like, or to, to do what we do, do fire camp. And we did a whole different thing than I thought we were going to do. 
through and I was done and I was like, ah, and the guy got completely healed. Praise, Praise the Lord. Oh. Just, <laughs> I had no idea. Anyway, I was arguing about, arguing about fire camp. And um, it was like, oh, Jesus, you know, this is so much work. And that's when he told me, he said, he said, Stephanie, you may have 10 years of influence with an adult. Maybe. If you're blessed, you'll have 10 years influence. But with children, you get the 100-year reward. Praise God. I have no idea Praise what the 100-year reward is, but I'll take it. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. And it's worth it. Yeah. Can I say that? If God says that, it's worth it. I'll take it. I don't know what it is, but I'm, that's, that's for later. Then I was like, well, Lord, you know, a couple years later, Lord, shouldn't we change the name of fire camp? You know, we don't bring tents. We don't camp. <laughs> we don't go start a fire out anywhere. We're just, you know, well, fire, we all know what fire represents, right. especially just being through Pentecost. I wasn't upset yep. with the word fire at all. It was just like camp. Camp is confusing. All right. Then I started studying camp. This is a war term. Yes. Oh, sure. yes. It's a war term. Yes. So the Lord said, you are at war yes. Yes. for the generation yes. Yes. to come. The generations. He's already to, always to, already told me as well. He told me, you'll hold the babies and the grandbabies of fire campers. Yeah. So I have held the babies of fire campers. Oh. Not the grandbabies yet, but I'm on the way. <laughs> I'm on the way there. Amen. It has to be 20, you know, 20 yeah. years. It's yeah. a big, long time. So I have held the baby, the babies. So the fire, the baby, the fire grandbabies babies. are on the way. Fire babies. Fire babies oh. are on the way. <laughs> Glory. So praise the Lord. So that's fire camp kind of in a nutshell. But it's fun. Can I just say? And we never know what's going to happen. Exactly. Because we get it. We don't have a curriculum. But we just start. I have cards. I go through. It kind of keeps us on track. But we never know what's going to happen. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> Okay, let's turn in your notes, and I should have told everyone there's notes over here. We are on page seven, and we're going to get through, um, we're going to start doing the Herods today. So on page seven in your notes, and I've got, I've got the next chapter just about ready to go, and it's good, I'm excited about it. I'm rewriting everything, <laughs> like I told you. I found some stuff I didn't know. It's, that's so much fun. Oh, my goodness. So we just finished Hanukkah, and I didn't take time to read. So if you haven't read the Hanukkah story, go back and read there, through that because it is so good. We read it at Hanukkah every year here in this place. So I'm going to let start right there where it says Hanukkah, mm -hmm. and that's at the bottom of page 7. Yes. After defeating the Syrians at Emmaus and Beth Zur, the Temple Mount was cleansed and rededicated in Kislev about 164 BC, three years after Antiochus had desecrated. They ground the pagan idol into dust, which could have been a, who knows, could have been day on. This, the celebration became known as the Feast of Dedication or of Lights or Hanukkah because the lamps in the temple were relit. Jewish history had not known so inspiring a gen general. Okay, are we finding it? Okay, okay good. Since David fought for the unity and independence of Israel. The miracle of the oil for the menorah was not only the miracle of the, of the Maccabean revolt, revolt, it was equally miraculous that the strong were conquered by the weak but the, and the many for the few, the cause of justice and freedom. Praise the Lord. Now, the high priesthood is reestablished. Now, remember, um, Matt, Mattathias was up. He was a priest. He was of the line of Levi, and he was working in the temple when he or he was he was as he was a priest of the temple when the soldiers came in and they were going to sacrifice the altar. And he was the one who made the first blow. That was in that story. Okay, so. His sons, Judas, Jonathan, uh, there were five sons, but those two, Judas and Jonathan's brother, assumed leadership. And uh, let's we'll see, assume, oh, Jonathan assumed leadership and was wise enough to reestablish relations with Rome 
until he unwisely trusted a Syrian general named Trypho, who massacred a thousand of his unsuspecting troops and Jonathan in 142 BC. Simon followed Jonathan as a leader from 142 BC until his death in 134. Things were relatively calm. He established peace in the land and Israel rejoiced with great joy. The people also were so grateful for Simon that they bestowed the high priesthood on him and his family in perpetuity. Now, this is when we get into trouble when we do it. There's no um, God direction. We just say, hey, your family and your family. It's forever. human. Right? It's not they took God. it out of the tribe of Levi. Them. Yes, but they were from the tribe of Levi. Oh, they were still. But they weren't the one. They, but okay. you know, there God was the one who chose the mm -hmm. high priest, yeah. even if from the family, yes. even yes. from the you know the yes. tribe, and he would be the one. But now this is kind of switched, and they said, "Oh, we love you so much, Sion. Yeah. and and yeah. was rightly so. He loved. They loved the Maccabean family. They were like, "We love you, Manatees. We yeah. bless you for you saved our lives." Right. I mean, it's just like you look at the uh, family of um, um, Benjamin Netanyahu. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. His father helped save that nation and yes, put that did. nation back into Israel's yes, hand. I mean, powerful. And and uh, Benjamin was all the time working back up in that same thing um, to to help restore. He was in the army. He was a godly man. And um, I'm not saying he, he believes in Jesus. We yeah. don't know, right? We don't know if he's met. But he was a godly man, loves God. And so, you know, we just have to be careful that we don't give somebody power that's not called by God. We want to be very careful. Okay. Yeah. So Simon's son, John Hercules, and I'm going to go through some of the sons just a little bit quickly because um, some of this, well, even worse with the Herods, it gets worse. So we're going to try to get through that today. The Greek, okay, here's the legend of the Septuagint. Now, the Sept, I don't, I don't think I have any Septuagints in my bookstore. But here's the legend that goes behind the Septuagint. And you will hear people talk about the Septuagint every so often. The Septuagint is a Greek translation of the Torah or the Pentateuch and that was made after Alexander the Great. Mm. So, so it would have been after Ezra mm -hmm. would have been after Alexander the Great, would have been after Queen Esther, Esther Daniel, all of those people. Um, and so this translation would have been in circulation in all of the countries that had Jews because they would have been learning Greek as their common language. And actually Hebrew began to kind of fade a little bit in some of the nations because they were having to speak every day the language of what was common. I mean, you don't come to is to America and just say you're going to speak Hebrew. It wouldn't work. You speak English. Same thing with any other language, right? We want you, when you come to America, we want you to learn English. So it's important so you succeed, so you can get a job, so you, can, you know, you can depend for yourself. Okay. Only the Greek. It's anyway, this was the Hasmonean dynasty. Okay, the, the Jews it's, it's of the Egypt looked upon the translation of the Torah into Greek as such an important event that they surrounded it later with a halo of legend. <laughs> they said that the act of translating the Torah was connected to a miracle. So here's the miracle. The story told in a letter in the apocryphal book of Artasius of Alexandria goes like this. The second Ptolemy, and his name was Philadelphus, he was the Greek pharaoh of Egypt. Okay, go take yourself back to Egypt for just a moment. He had this huge Alexandrian library, they called it. Okay, it was a huge library of the finest books in the world. One day, Philadelphus's librarian told them that he had 995 books representing the best literature, that the five greatest books of all, are the five books of Moses, but they are not present. Those are to be found among the Jews. The king sent an ambassador to the high priest in Jerusalem and asked that a copy of these books be sent to him, along with the men capable of rendering them into Greek. The high priest did so, sending 72 learned, wise, and saintly scribes 
and a copy of Torah. The king and his courtiers marveled at their wisdom, and they were treated with much, much festivity. To translate the Torah, each scribe was placed in a separate chamber, so without communicating with his fellows, he translated the entire Torah by himself. Now, the Torah is the first five books, so Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Okay, so they each, and can I say that they would have been trained, and they would have known how to do this. Re remember, even when the founding fathers came to America, one of the tests of getting through like Harvard, Yale, and all of that was you have to translate a chapter of the Bible from yeah. Hebrew to English or other way around or Greek to Hebrew. I mean, it was they were trained mm -hmm. in this stuff. And so that eventually fell away, sadly, because I mean, if they would have stuck with some of those tests, <laughs> we might have been smarter. Anyway. They translated in the separate chambers. When the work was completed, the king had various translations compared. Behold the miracle! Not a single difference in word or letter was found among them. Because 70 learned scribes uh, translated the Pentateuch or the Torah, the Greek translation of the Torah is called the Septuagint, which means the 70. Pagans as well as Jews were so proud of the Septuagint that they declared the day of its completion an annual holiday. Uh, the Arteus legend about the Septuagint may just be that, a legend. During the 3rd century BC, Greek translations of the Hebrew scriptures were already in circulation among the Alexandrian Jews. Knowledge of, the, of Hebrew was waning in the Jewish community, so Greek translation may have actually helped preserve the word of God to the Jewish nation and the world. Therefore, you know, God's plan is always good. And he does it using different languages, different nations, different peoples. It's okay. So we just have to go with it. Okay. Brief history of the last centuries before Christ. So now we're about 135 BC, so 100 years plus, plus or minus, before Jesus was born. Okay, here we go. Simon is the high priest, the ruler of the Jews. The Roman, the Roman Ptolemy had him killed, wanting the land for himself. John Hercany, son of Simon, is able to gain control of Jerusalem and works to, de to fortify Jerusalem. He, however, opened the sepulcher of David and removed 3,000 talents to employ foreign auxiliaries for security help, which had never been done before. Wow. John also worked to take some of the surrounding cities back under his control. 133. During this time, uh, so what's going on in the whole in the world around um, what's going on in Jerusalem is the African slave wars have started. Delos was an island between Greece and Turkey, and it was used as a shopping place for slaves. My raids of slaves were traded each day. Those involved, and I, there's the names right there. Um, our brother who came, who did the worship, grief. Anthony. Um, Anthony. Anthony. Anthony Turner. I actually will have him teach at some point um, because he has some brilliant research. Has done some good. He talks about the um, what happened in the African slave wars and how that they did these ceremonies that when they left Africa they were never to come back. And that's why you don't have black missionaries going to Africa. It's very interesting. It's very interesting. Because once they left Africa they were never go back. That's why you don't see big groups of black people just going back. Right. Doesn't happen. Because their family way back Year, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of years ago, made a vow never to return to Africa. So, um, so in America, we're pretty deceived about some of those African religions, about those African vows, about what the what that has happened over time, and we can succumb to that. You know, they believe many of those witch doctors believe that they can send a hurricane to America, yes, and that America will suffer because of it. So it is interesting some of the things that 
but he told the whole thing behind BLM and why it is straight from Africa. It's a religion straight out of Africa, and we, you know, we can't participate with that. So no matter how the powers that be want to jam it down our throat, we're not going to bow the knee. I'm not going to bow my knee no. to a foreign god. No, and that's exactly what it is. So Anthony, we'll, we'll have him teach sometime. It makes makes a whole lot of sense. I have black people in my family, and I would love for the, I would love to learn this so that I understand, because I don't even know anybody that wants to go back to Africa. I have a hard enough time wanting to go to Africa. <laughs> But I loved it when I was there. So, Steph, yeah. so they, this belief of sending hurricanes is because of the damage done to the people? Of witchcraft. That's the witchcraft that comes out. They know the power but, that they can latch into in Africa. Right. They, they okay, believe but, they can control the weather. But the people witches. that were the slaves that came from there, is that a kind of a get back at America for no. what they did in the slave trade or does it not have to do with the slave trade? Well, remember the slave trade back here would have been not for America, it would have been for the rest of the world. Yeah. yeah. And so but they made them when well because what was going on with the slave trade was one one tribe selling right. black people, their black their brothers, own. sisters, into slavery. Right. Yes. And many were just slaughtered. It was, I don't know if you remember reading David Livingston or any of the yes. things that went along with David Livingston. Yes. And them trying to get a boat down the river. Yes. Because of, they could not get a boat down the river because of the bodies. Uh, yes. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, the massacres. The oh, massacres were horrific. The it's continued. The massacres in Africa have continued over diff over time. Over it's different. going on right it's now. It's going on right, going now. On right now. now. You're exactly right. Exactly right. And it's the same religious splits that are a big part of it. The, mm. the principality Islamic Islamic. Yes. The Islamic people were the ones that were enslaving these right. other people, and the black tribe would sell them to the Islamic people, and mm. they were taken, and still are taken, oftentimes into Saudi Arabia and other yes. places. Mm. And yeah. slavery has not awful. ended. I think why, was wow. small, why would they send a hurricane now? Why would oh. they? Why would they want? To? Why would they why, want to send they, a hurricane now? Does yeah. is that good? It, okay, I'm sorry, I missed it. So no, that's hard. that was so good. To, yeah, that's that was what good. you explained. Yeah. Right. Well, it's because they believe they have power to hurt us, mm -hmm. and they tap into that power and send one our way. I don't. Who not knows? just us. But not just us. But it, it, other yeah. countries. Yeah. 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 It's and hatred. and it's it is driven by the principality of yeah. power that rules over that area if they're tapping into that they're getting they're getting those ideas from that enemy um yeah did you encounter any of that as you were in africa we encountered yeah. witchcraft yeah yeah but you just don't give it any power no. you know you no just power. no we didn't run we just said yeah. <laughs> jesus oh, jesus that's right. They may not Sudan, but there were I did I expected it and it, it was it was not we were the Holy Spirit was so thick. Was Good. Yeah. Were you with other Christians? No, it was just well, the little group that I had. Well the, the Sudan I was in southern Sudan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the southern part of Sudan has been Christian since the sixteenth century. Oh, yeah. Right. So yeah, oh, yeah. So yeah. 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 David Livingston and many other missionaries that went into Africa brought the gospel. Yeah. Yes. And those Thank believers God. are precious. Yeah. And Thank believe God. me, those yeah. are the first ones They're they want to kill oh, and definitely. persecute are the believers that, yeah. you know, in, in Africa. And they will kill yeah. their brothers. Yeah. So anyway, so it's been going on a long time. I say that to I'll say that it's been going on a long time. It wasn't just America the guilt trip for Americans that they have put on uh, these poor kids come out of school going, I, you know, I wish my skin were black. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm just like, get over it. We've all got our crud. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what color your skin is. No I can't understand are. not loving somebody because they have pigment or not pigment. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense on the planet. Exactly. It just is the craziest thought process. And I think most believers really feel that way do we don't i don't i couldn't care less how much pigment you have i my brothers and sisters in africa i love them to death and um we take a bullet for them because they are just priceless 
But anyway, we we know we just know it's been going. It's been going on forever. In fact, you know, it's talked about um, in different places. And when the law, you know, Moses had laws for the for the slaves, and they were not just one color; they were all colors. Yes. So okay. So here we are at 107 now, 100 years before Jesus, with John Hyrcanus. He dies after serving high priest for 29 years in Israel. Remember, the high priest is kind of like the he's it took the place of the king, basically. He's not is no longer King David, is no longer King Zerubbabel at the end of that. Now it's the high priesthood that, that's in control. They're the ones that are are basically uh, saying what's law, what's legal, what's not legal. Okay. So the first um, after serving his 29 years in Israel, it said that after his death, the stones which were set in the high priest ephod or the breastplate. Uh, and the right, the onyx stones upon his right shoulder grew dim and lost their luster because of the disobedience of the Jews to God's law. Judas or Aristobulus succeeded his father in the high priesthood. Uh, he was the first of his time period to place a crown on his head in an attempt to change the state to a monarchy. A cruel man to his own family. This is why you don't give somebody all kinds of power. He promoted Antagonus, his brother, put everyone else, including his mother, in prison, starved her to death, eventually killed Antagonus, which he sorely regretted, soon got very ill and died. John Herc and his sons were released from prison, and Alexander Janius. Okay, you know what? I'm going to have to find out. I think that was the Aristobulus. I think this was from Israel's. Okay, it gets real confusing in here. I, I spent a whole day going, is this the Roman high priest or is this? It gets really confusing. But I think we're right. I think we, I decided this was the, the Israeli high priest. So John Hyrcanus' sons were released from prison after he died. And Alexander Janius was made king because he was the oldest. He ruled, secured the land, and Israel was in relative peace. 95 BC, you're going to recognize her name. Anna, the prophetess, daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher, was married and lived with her husband for seven years after their marriage. So that was going on during this time. Think of the things she, that she would have experienced. Rome was friendly to Israel, continuing its rise to power, took over much of the land through conquest. Most of the history recorded is about Rome and its wars, its rulers, dealings with rulers, politicians, and the ruling family. Cicero is one of the recording his, uh, historians and speech uh, makers of his time. The family names have continued, that, that are in continuous use are Ptolemy, Antiochus, and Cleopatra. And can I say it's so confusing to keep these guys straight? Marcus Antony is part of the ruling Roman families, the grandfather of Mark Antony. Uh, I, I say some of these names because you and our history books, you would recognize them. And so that's the only reason I bring them up. Uh, Anna the prophetess, the daughter of Phanuels, her husband would have died in 88 BC. She did not leave the temple that served God with fasting and prayer from now until Jesus is born. Wow. 81 BC, wow. Julius Caesar rises to power in Asia. It's rumored that he had prostituted his chastity for the king's lust. Curio said in one of his speeches that Caesar was every woman's man and every man's woman. Can I just say, homosexuality is not a new problem. <laughs> it's an old, a very old problem. Especially in Rome when that they really went downhill. 79 BC, Alexander Janius died. He had reigned for 29 years, also serving as the high priest, much to the ire of the Jewish leadership, which did not believe the two offices should be combined. During this Jewish holiday, Sukkot, Alexander, while officiating as the high priest in the temple in Jerusalem, demonstrated his displeasure against the Pharisees by refusing to perform the water libation ceremony properly. Instead of pouring it on the altar, he poured it on his feet. The crowd responded with shock at his mockery, showed their displeasure by pelting him with um, etrogrim, or the citrons. We'll, sometime we'll get those for the holiday. What, what uh, holiday is that? Uh, where you wave the citron and the, I think it's a feast of, not Sukkot. Oh, yes, it is Sukkot. Sukkot. Okay, we'll get that sometime and I'll, I'll explain all that. The Jews made the situation worse by insulting Alexander. Outraged, now this is the high priest, 
killed 6,000 people. Whoa. On his deathbed, he advised his wife Alexandria to hide his death from the soldiers for a time. And after she returned victorious to Jerusalem to give the Pharisees a little more freedom than before, the Pharisees were a great influence to the Jews. The common people placed a great deal of confidence in them. Alexander was disliked by the Jews because he had offended the Pharisees, so he persuaded Alexandria to yield and allow them to have his funeral, and she should not do anything in matters of government government without the Pharisees' knowledge and approval. So he was trying to he was trying to say, you know, Alexandria, you know, you probably should try to get along so you can live your life out and my sons can live their life out. I didn't want to get along, but you go ahead. You'll get along with them. <laughs> In this way, Alexander would have an honorable burial. It was, you know, it was all you, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. And she and her son would reign without any problems. Alexandra declared Harkness her oldest son as high priest. That's never how God intended it, right? She governed for nine years. She was queen in name only for the Pharisees managed all the state affairs. Now, I say these things because I was to think about the Pharisees as the ruling class, class yeah. of Israel. They were Jews. And they were the Jews. They believed the law. They believed the Torah. They would have done all of those things. And we'll talk about the Pharisees more as we go to, to see what they actually believe. Um, all right, let's go down to Antipas. He was the grandson, and he was made the governor of Idumea, which is Edom. He had a son named Herod. Now, here we go with the Herods, okay, who later became king over Judea. Herod, okay, so Antipas, this is where it gets so confusing, who later became king over, okay, so Herod was 25 years old when his father placed him over Galilee. Think of Galilee as that one segment of where the Samaritans would have lived. If you want to get a, a map up of there of Israel, I need to bring my map down here of Israel. Let me get that. 70, um, Joseph, okay, 70 BC, this is interesting. Joseph was born to Matthias Curtis, the priest's son. Joseph was the grandfather of Josephus, the whoa, historian. Whoa. <laughs> so he was born 70 BC. Think about that. So then you have Queen Alexandra, because very sick and dies, leaves her goodness, her older son, to succeed her. 68, the pirates are so powerful at this time, they controlled the entire sea. Now, think about that. This is so important, because if they, if the pirates control the sea, what are they doing? They're controlling all of the climbers. And what? All the supply. Exactly. The supply lines are, are controlled by the pirates. Plus, like the pirates go up and down, and what do they do? They come into a village. They steal everything they want, including women, people, people whatever. And um, so you've got slave trade. You've got human trafficking. You've got um, supply trafficking. You've got all the things that we're dealing with today because they're on land. It sounds like today. <laughs> yeah, it sounds today. like today. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so Galilee is up. Here, right? All right. Am I right? Yep, okay. That's right. So right in there. So she was king. Notice the no, or queen and king. They're just notice this kingdom. Actually, even says it here. Kingdom of kingdom of Israel, kingdom of Judea. So um, anyway, so anyway, that's kind of the area. You just keep going on that. Okay. Okay. They intercepted provisions intended for the fleet and made a habit of coming to shore destroying provinces and islands. The Romans, who had conquered the whole world, could not control the seas. The common base of the pirates was Cilicia, which is right off the coast in there. They had citadels, towers, and deserted islands everywhere. Isn't that interesting? Because here we are again dealing with secret islands. Mm. Uh, disgusting. People are despicable. And once they start being despicable, they never stop. It's like it goes on and on with secret creeks for their ships. This evil attracted many from eastern countries, they, and they banded together. Pirates exchanged the land for the sea, so that in a short time there were many tens of thousands of pirates. The pirates had more than a thousand ships, captured more than 400 cities. That's pretty powerful. Marcus Antonius, grandfather of Mark Antony, was elected proconsul for the province of Cilicia, 
During his term, Antonius fought the Cilician, Cilician, I don't think I'm saying that right. It's not Sicilian though. No. Pirates with such success that the Senate voted a naval triumph in his honor. His daughter Antonia was kidnapped by pirates from his villa near um, uh, Mysnum and was only released after the payment of a very large ransom. He was killed in a civil war in 87 BC. So now Rome is really rising to power. Um, from 63, so almost 70 BC to 70 AD, we can think Rome dominating. Pompey, the great Roman general, was given the task of great care of all the sea coast with the Roman Empire. Pompey and his commanders controlled both the seas, seas uh, but they, were, they boxed up the pirates in every port, bay, creek, a recess, recess uh, and pro, uh, promontory or island. Cicero stated that Pompey brought all uh, Cilicia into subjection to the Romans within 49 days from when he had set sail. Now that's pretty amazing. But Pompey was quite the general he, and, and many of these guys have the great stuck onto their name because of, um, and, um, because of uh, Alexander the Great. It, it, right. That just kept coming down. Pompey the Great. In Judea, Pompey the Great intervened in the civil war between Hyrcanus um, and supported the Pharisees. Well, boy, that had to be good for them. <laughs> and then Aristobulus, too, supported the Sadducees. The armies of Pompey and Hyrcanus laid siege. To Jerusalem, after three months, they, the city fell. Of the Jews, there were there fell 12,000, but of the Romans, very few and no small enormities were committed about the temple itself, which in former ages had been inaccessible, as seen by none. Pompey went into it, into the temple. And not, only, not a few of those that were with him also saw all that was unlawful for other men to see but just for the high priest. So they basically went into the Holy of Holies. Mm -hmm. There were in that temple the golden table, the holy candlestick, the pouring vessels, a great quantity of spices. Besides these, none of the other treasures or talents or sacred money. Yet Pompey touched uh, nothing of all of this on account of his regard to the religion, which is very interesting. Mm -hmm. And in this point, he also acted in a manner that was worthy of his virtue. He had a, a bit of the fear of the Lord. Praise the Lord. The next day he gave orders to those that had charge of the temple to cleanse it, bring what offerings the law required to God, restored the high priesthood. I wonder if he had a dream. Yeah. Both because he had been useful to him in other respects and because he had hindered the Jews and the country from giving Aristobulus any assistance in the war against him. Pompey conquered Jerusalem in 63. Right. This is the same day that the Jews keep fast to remember the burning of the sacred roll by the wicked Jehoiakim. So in other words, on the same day, the centuries passed or time passed, uh, the burning of the sacred, Jehoiakim burned the, the roll. Remember when he, uh, uh, Jeremiah gave him the prophecy and he took a pen knife to it. Jehoiakim was wicked, but then he finally just burned it. You know, if you're not going to believe God's word, you may as well just burn it. And that's exactly what he did. Nebuchadnezzar captured Jerusalem. The Jews began to serve Pompey. On the same date, 28 years later, they began to serve Herod. And about 12,000 Jews were killed or killed themselves during the siege. The temple was taken on the day of the fast. The Jews continued in the whole service of God in the temple, even as they were being attacked. They did not stop their sacrifices no matter what happened. After conquering Jerusalem, Pompey appointed Hyrcanus as the high priest without any royal title. So there again, now it's split from being king back to high priest. Okay, which is good. Separation of church and state is not a bad thing. <laughs> we believe in that. But we don't believe in the, the separation of God from our country, right? We don't want... I, I really don't want my pastor, or my pastor, my president telling me I can worship this way, yeah. like King George did, like we got away from. Yes. Now, was the city Pompeii named after this man? Probably. Okay. He probably named it after himself. Okay. Yeah, and that would have been in Italy, okay. where uh, Vesuvius, yes. uh, the, yeah. the uh, oh, volcano yeah. was. Yeah. My husband's been there. It's quite hilarious. Wow. Okay. Uh, let's go down to, okay, Caesar Augustus is born, 
Look at this. He was taken down. Yeah, there's, you know, there's some things in there. It's, okay. it's not really important. By 62, Julius Caesar had conquered France, Switzerland, and the Low Countries. He was made dictator in 49 BC. Pompey was slain in 48 BC. And, okay, now, let me say, there's about 50 Pompeys. Right. You know, right. rulers. Oh. Because they all named their son oh. Pompey, Pompey, okay. Pompey. Okay. Or Ptolemy, Ptolemy, okay. Ptolemy. Right. Or Herod, Herod. Right. Yeah. And so, so I, 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 I did bring a list. Who knows which one yeah. actually named. It could have been the first one, though, that did all the conquering. I brought a kind of a, I did have a flow chart. I don't think I brought it today. Anyway, of all the Herods, just so we can keep the Herods yeah. straight. Because it gets crazy. So when I say Herod, which one? Well, yeah, <laughs> we're oh. believing it's the one we're talking about, but right. I'm, I'm telling you, I was so confused. I was like, oh, I will never figure this out. So under the Herods, on the same fast day that Jerusalem had been attacked 27 years earlier, in 37 BC, Herod made an assault on Jerusalem, and the city was captured. The city was filled with the bodies of the murdered. Herod did not plunder the city, nor did he steal the holy things from the temple. He did take the, all the gold and silver, though. Among those killed were the judges of the Sanhedrin. That's a big deal. Yes. Herod spared those he liked, and he honored them. These miserable times would have been witnessed by priest Zacharias and his wife, Elizabeth. Uh, who had who? who John, 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 the the baby? Baptist. John the Baptist. But they would have been a little bit younger in years. They would have been watching all of this happen. Anna the prophetess and Simeon the just, who received an answer from the Holy Spirit that he should not see death until he's, he had seen the Lord's Christ, had seen the Messiah, Yeshua. Romans, the Romans confirmed Herod as ruler over Jerusalem in 37 BC after a series of military victories, even calling him king. Herod turned the citadel of Masada, into a refuge for himself and stored sufficient arms there for 10,000 men. However, he never visited. <laughs> Have you who's been to Amazon? Yeah. That is an amazing yeah, I, place oh. to go. Quite a citadel yeah. up on top of this amazing mountain. And you do look down and you yeah. see the, the Dead Sea. Right. And um, there were, you know, when we were up there, one of, the, one of the really hard things to realize is that there would have been young, young men and I don't know about girls, but young men for sure, those 10,000 troops would have lived up there on top. Those young men would have had to be slaves to bring water. That's the desert, middle of the desert. Mm -hmm. Their job every day would have been to haul water up and down that mountain. Yikes. Mm -hmm. To those 10,000 troops. Mm -hmm. So your whole life, think about it, your whole life dedicated until you couldn't lift water anymore. Then you were killed. And then you were killed. Then you were killed. Yeah. And that, I mean, to me, that was sad. It's out. like, oh my goodness, those poor young men. Um, yes. But who knows? Okay. The Romans confirmed Herod. Saw that Octavian became supreme ruler. Herod married, married Miriam, and he was profoundly in love with her. He actually married 10 wives. Herein, we have. More Herods. Yeah. <laughs> it becomes so convoluted. You have no idea. One big happy family. <laughs> one big happy family. Well, one big very angry, mad family, jealous <laughs> a lot and all of the time and gossiping. Uh, he was very jealous. Began to listen to court gossip started by his sister, eventual Miriam. Uh, even though she was innocent, she and her mother were executed. Remorse so gripped Herod, and I want you to hear about this because Herod was the one that Jesus had to deal with as a baby. Right. Okay, right. So gripped Herod that he became physically and mentally ill. Ill. Here, and oh, we're gonna let's just finish this. Yeah. We're really close. Herod could could be good and quite generous when the occasion demanded it. He was often sensitive to the religious feelings of the Jew and tried to win their friendship. His Idumean blood, or from Edom, geographically just south of Judea. He, and worship of the cults made him a foreigner in their eyes. He rebuilt the temple in Jerusalem. It was Herod's temple, right? Yeah. Herod's temple was rebuilt with great magnificence, built a port city at, the, at Caesarea, beautified and fortified other important cities, kept Rome satisfied, thus providing all stability Israel would have otherwise known, uh, would not have otherwise known. 
His cynical use of the priesthood as a political tool and the looseness of his personal life made him generally hated by the devout men of Judaism. Um, this is the very beginning of the next chapter as well, so I'm just going to read through it. It says, The last days of Herod were filled with violence and hatred. He killed three of his own sons. He was smitten with droopsy and cancer of the intestines, haunted by the memory of his murders. Herod died on April Fool's Day, 4 BC, a man of great barbarity towards all equally and a slave to his passions. That was from Josephus. The jealous and unscrupulous character of this man explains the duplicity of his dealings with uh, the Magi from the East, his brutality in ordering the massacre of the children in Bethlehem. The silence of history on this matter can be explained rather simply for the slaughter of a dozen infants in an obscure Judean village would not arouse much comment in comparison with the enormity of Herod's greater crimes. Isn't it ironic that during the reign of his brutal and an inhumane ruler, the Prince of Peace was born. Man, I have a question. Okay. Go ahead. Please keep it. Get the answer possibly very, very short. No, you're okay. Uh, we're, we actually did that really fast, so what we're good. What cults did Herod worship? Was he, I'm sure he was you know, deranged. He was, he was, he was off his rocker. Yeah, here was my question on that. I mean, he did honor the Jew. And was he partly Jewish because he was an Edomite? You know, it just makes you wonder, and um, it, it good question. Thank you. Good Thank question. You. He honored, he did seem to honor God. I mean, with him building the temple, that was a pretty big deal. He, and he heavily taxed his people. He heavily family. taxed his people. Plus the he, Roman tax. They, right? Boy, they loved taxes. Man, did we it. think they love it now, man. They really loved it then. And he um, would have taken everything he needed. Yeah. You know, we're yeah. taking the stuff, and yeah. I want to thank you for putting in there about the, what the gossip did to him. Yes, because thank I have you. noticed thank it you, among sir. Christians, the Christian circles. I'm oh, in, oh and I, I am shocked that women are. I am around mostly women um, that they're doing that. Like I've, I've never. It's just not in my DNA. Like since this is before I was walking with the Lord, even. It's, and I just avoided it. Yeah. So I'm really, since I notice it really quickly, yes. and I, and I like, burn that right off. I don't want any part of it. Exactly. And it's just like, it's it's so destructive. It, it is, is so destructive. Totally, totally. Can I say that at the very end of gossip is, it goes down a path. Mm -hmm. it, yes. it, it starts with gossip, then it's slander, Yeah. then it's malicious gossip with, with the intent of evil meant toward that person to destroy their personality to destroy who they are then it goes down and at the very end of it is murder and i didn't understand that until i was being gossiped about then i realized and let me say that i had participated in it earlier in my life yeah. and so i it was an excellent lesson for me because once i realized the chain of events that go on along with yes. gossip, malicious, slander. And then people start doing it worse because then they feel like they were wrong in the beginning. Yes. So they shouldn't have said anything. So yes. now they're going to make sure that people think they're right. Exactly. Right. And, and they, they get and like, they so get dig harder and start making things up. It's and, true. And it's, like, it's almost like I, a dagger. It's like, I don't it's like a dagger in your back. I don't hesitate when I even hear it. I'll say, yes. you know what, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll ask her when I see her or, or whatever. Or, Excellent. you know what, I don't know. I'm not, I don't, let's talk about something else. Or This is just, why just I won't even it. say anything about yeah. other pastors 99, yeah. 99 million times out of 100. The only time I'm going to warn you about something or a church or another thing that's happening is when I know and I heard with their own mouth yeah. that what they're saying is teaching some heresy or they're participating with some really bad stuff because you want to be so careful you know what i will see a pastor do some things and maybe i disagree but i'm like you know what they're still don't yeah. working yeah. it we're working from the same right god yeah. and we're going to we're going to uh, bless them unless they're doing something bad that i need to warn people about that we're going to bless them and we're going to pray for them and this is how we have to be with each other you know we're all human we're all living life. We all make big mistakes, right? Yes. <laughs> I know my mistakes. And 
Um, if we can all just stay in that humble place, and I'm glad you said that. Yeah, um, what it did to him, what he, what yes. the repercussions, if he had remained happy, if yes. he had remained content, instead, instead he, he was so consumed with remorse, he just, yeah. because of that gospel. It destroyed his entire yeah, family, and, and that was leadership. Legacy. And can you imagine what this kind of um, um, gossip and all of this, I mean, today, we're seeing it on such a high level mm -hmm. with the social media. And, I, you know, when I was going through whatever, I was thinking, good grief, can you imagine this on a national level? Can you imagine this on a high level like that where you're being slandered to high heaven? I can't even yeah. imagine turning on social media Same and giving here. one wit about it Same if here. I were in any kind of leadership. And I don't really care about it now either. I just, I don't even pay attention to it. But think about how it, the level of it goes yeah. up and up. That's why I love being hidden. I could care less <laughs> how long we stay in the basement. It doesn't matter to me because I prefer this over being out somewhere where they can slaughter you yes. with words. It's, I, and I tell you, it is a bloodbath. So if it's not your story, it's not yours to tell. That's right. exactly Thank right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Amen. It's the truth. It's good. That's good. And we, and we want to stay in that place of humility that when we see somebody struggling, we're going to pray. We're not going to. We're not going to beat them while they're down, right? That's fire camp. I, <laughs> I wonder if this wife that Herod loved so much was the one that gave him the the. The advice when Jesus was that would that you have no idea. It's a different family. It's down the line just a little bit more, and we'll go. Okay, we'll keep so this, going through. This. So it wasn't yeah. the same wife that he had at the time. Jesus. This is the one called Herod the Great, right? And yeah. he came for yes. the <laughs> later Herod. Oh, <laughs> this, this man was much earlier. A little bit <laughs> earlier. I call him Herod the Butcher. The original. Oh, Herod, okay. Herod, okay. Herod, okay. Okay. Yeah. So. Herod the Great. No, there's a whole bunch of Herod the, of the weenies. And, the and weenie I'll, boys. Bring the I'll bring the little the little thing and you'll see what I'm saying because, man, I was struggling one day. If I laid you up astray on this, I'm just trying to say, watch out. <laughs> because <laughs> I don't know that I've got all these Herods right. And and it became a ruling class name like Pharaoh, yeah. like Ptolemy, like Pompey. Yeah. <laughs> It's a ruling class name, so every son has, and every daughter has that name too. So, and it's even like Alexander, named Alexandra, his wife, Alexandria, so he can, I mean, they just name them after themselves, like, I'm God, you guys got to be like me, and I'm going to, you know, you got to have my hair cut. <laughs> like, what? So, what? North Korea. Yeah. what about, uh, isn't it George Tyson has... How many Georges? Oh, yeah. And they're all yeah. George. They're all George. <laughs> George one, George two, George right. six or nine. Yeah, a bunch. A bunch, a of, bunch of Georges. A bunch of Georges. Yeah. Can you imagine? We, we do have a lot of Chris's in our family. It's one with a K. I mean, and, and then we named our son Christian. But now we have more Chris's because we have the uh, mar marriages and it's just funny it's like these names they just go down for us so <laughs> let's just let's just lift our offering before the lord and uh thank him for what he's doing oh here we're lifting this up for you here <laughs> so father we just thank you and give you glory we thank you lord for your provision and father we lord you know while we're looking at history we realize that you took care of your children yes. all down through history. Yes. And that doesn't mean we're all going to live in peace and safety all of our lives. The Lord, how you take care of us is so yes. good. So as we lift our offering before you, Lord, we just thank you for how you provide for us. We give you glory, honor, and praise. We say it's a supernatural thing to serve this supernatural God. And we give you glory. Thank you, Father. Now, for the, those of us, Lord, right here in this place, and those that we love that aren't here this morning, we just bless them. Lord, yes. may the blessings of the Lord be upon us. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And give you his shalom. Yes. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. All Amen. right, I'll just set this. Oh, I can set it back here. Oh, oh I'll just